OK, thank you for joining. Let's start our sixth session in this series of webinars which we are doing. Today we are going to talk about uh, OneNote. I don't know how many of you use it, but. Uh, every session I've been doing for last, I don't know, 15 years, I ask a question to the audience. Most of my sessions are in person, so I ask them how many sessions or how, how often have you used OneNote? Raise hands. Typically what happens every time I ask this question, how many of you are using OneNote? You know what is the answer? Typically one person is raising hands and the joke is because of that Microsoft chose a brand name called OneNote because really one person uses it in the audience. But never mind, let's go and do something nice. Even if you have never seen OneNote, I hope to induce you to use OneNote effectively. Now this is something which even people who use OneNote is are not aware of. This is PDF search or scanned document search. Not necessarily PDF, but most commonly PDFs are what scanned documents are. So we have a scanned document. Maybe it's a 100 page document. I want to search for something. Because it's a scanned picture, I can't search. So we have to scroll, scroll, scroll to find a particular word, phrase or clause. Very bad. The solution is to use OneNote. Now, what do you do? You go to Acrobat or whatever software you have. Everything has a print option. Open the print drop down and you may be surprised to notice that there is something called send to OneNote. You may see two options because sometimes OneNote is installed as a OneNote app on Windows 10 and also as a desktop app. If you have a choice, use the one with a number. That's the desktop app. After that, it will ask you to do something. You choose a OneNote notebook. We will see what a OneNote notebook is. Just choose the default notebook. Now it will print those to a OneNote page. And now notice I'm searching. Searching is Control F and it is actually finding all the places where the characters P, A are visible. This is really useful for searching large scan documents. No special preparation is required. Going one step further, what if you want the whole text from that scan document? No problem. Right click on it. Choose copy text from all pages or one page, whatever you want, and then you can copy paste that recognized text wherever you want. It will make some mistakes based on the scan quality. You will have to do some corrections generally, but it's still better than retyping the whole thing. Now coming to anatomy. What is OneNote for those who don't know? OneNote is just an electronic notebook, but unlike a physical notebook, we can have multiple notebooks on the same device. So this is the notebook name, and then you can have multiple topics or sections as they are called. Each section can have pages. How many notebooks? How many sections? How many pages? Answer is unlimited. No questions asked. Everything as many as you need, you create. Now when you create OneNote notebooks, how many to create is something which you have to decide. But let me give you some idea. Look at the way you work. For example, you are in HR. Probably you'll create a separate notebook for recruitment, separate notebook for compensation, separate notebook for performance review. And within each notebook, you can have multiple sections. If I'm a project manager, I'm handling five projects. I'll create five notebooks, project one, project two, like that. Bottom line is create as many notebooks as you need. Don't stuff too many things in a single notebook. Otherwise, what happens later on reorganizing them becomes difficult. Where to create notebooks? Obviously, never on the local PC. Always created either on OneDrive, SharePoint or Teams. The reason being we can use those notebooks not just on the desktop, but also on tablet and mobile and syncing happens automatically. And for that to work, OneNote has to be on one of these three places. All right. Now, where do you take notes on a day to day basis? Of course, we take notes on one of the three places, either a laptop, some software, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Notepad, WordPad, or some kind of paper diary 
or if you're not carrying anything, maybe you scribble some notes or type them on mobile. Fair enough. It's based on circumstances individually. The issue is after a few months, are you able to find those notes quickly? And typically the answer is no, it's difficult. Sometimes we find, sometimes we don't find, but there is effort involved. So one note is designed to eliminate that effort by allowing you to link notes to meetings. How do you do that? It's very simple. Go to your calendar, right click on the calendar. There is an option called meeting notes. Choose that meeting notes. Then it'll ask you, do you want to share these notes with the meeting or take your own notes? When you're learning, choose the second option. Now it will show you all the notebooks you have. Open the desired notebook, choose the correct section, and then it will create a page in that notebook in that section. What is special about that page? All the details from the meeting are available in this page, and whatever notes you take here are automatically linked to that meeting. When you finish the meeting, just close the notebook. Done. You don't have to save, don't have to remember file names, folder names. Everything we do in one note is auto save. Now that was the situation for this case where you are carrying your laptop. Now suppose you're carrying only your mobile. No problem. Go to mobile, open one note, add a new page, take just notes. At that point, the notes are not linked. Now you come back. Your desktop PC you switch on, the notes will have synced. And when you come back to the local PC, you want to see your notes. How do you do that? Let me show you live. So assuming these were my notes I have taken on mobile and retrospectively I want to link them to my OneNote. What do I do? I actually go here, home tab, meeting details, and I can choose meetings from here and retrospectively link them to my meetings. Worst case scenario, you're taking notes on paper. Then what do you do? No problem. Go to OneNote mobile, take a photo of those pages from your diary, come back to OneNote. Those notes will sync and then again go to meeting details and retrospectively add the link to meetings. Bottom line, whichever way you take notes, you can link them to OneNote, which is great news. Now, during meetings, one of the most important things we do is capture action points. Action points again remain in the notes. You may remember, you may not remember to act on them. Now, what do you do? As soon as you type an action point inside OneNote notebook, right click, you'll see that flag icon, choose the deadline, and OneNote knows how to talk to Outlook. It goes into your task folder, and we will see soon in Outlook how to manage your tasks better. That's how. Before you leave the meeting, you can actually be sure that the actionable items are going to get your attention when you go back. If it is some action item which you want to delegate and not do yourself, no problem. Click on custom and click on assign task in the task dialog. So that's how you link action points to meetings. Many of us nowadays carry styluses. So when you have a stylus, what do you do? You just take notes. In fact, even if you don't have a stylus and you have a touch screen or on a mobile, you can use finger to draw or write. If you have done this, now what happens? Even if it's handwritten, once it comes to one note desktop, it is searchable. That's number one. And secondly, if you want to convert it to ink from ink to text, that is also possible. So either select or if you don't select the whole page, it gets converted to text like this. So best of both worlds. So if you have never used ink, try using it even with a finger just for taking few critical notes. It is absolutely practically feasible. Now meetings can be long and even if you have a good typing speed and a very good laptop, you can't practically note down everything which was said by everyone in the meeting. In which case what happens later on? You forgot to note down something and that becomes a disputed item. Someone is saying I never said that. Now you are stuck. So that's why meeting allows you to have or one note allows you to have audio video recording. Test it out before the meeting. The problem now, assuming you have recorded the meeting and you have captured or typed some notes, what is going to happen? I have a meeting which has 20 minutes of audio recording and I have taken very few notes because I know everything is recorded, which is good. 
Now the practical problem is how do I go back to the recording? Of course, there is an there is a play button there, but that play button is going to play it from beginning to end. Who wants to listen to a boring meeting all over again? I want to say I want to hear what was being said when I wrote this or this or this. So in simple terms, I need the play button to be here or here or here. I don't know because I don't know where the dispute arise will arise or where I will need the clarification. So what do I do? No problem. Just click wherever you want and there is a play button. If I click on this play button, notice it found that correct timestamp and it plays from there. If I click somewhere else, it will find that timestamp and play from there. This happens automatically. All that you have to do is say record audio or video in the beginning and remember to stop that at the end because otherwise it keeps on recording till your hard disk is full. So it's a very nice useful thing. <coughs> Later on if you enable it will allow you to search for text which is in the audio as well. And before you ask it does not transcribe it into text. If you want that you have to use stream recording which we will see when we cover teams. Now sometimes you want the notes to be tagged. I'm sure some of you underline some of you put an asterisk next to something. Those are called tags. So out one note gives you a lot of tags and you can actually create custom ones. For example, I have created a custom tag called quality problem. This tag basically means it's a task in Outlook like that. There are lots and lots of tags available. This one note is designed for corporate as well as students. So this is a very good thing. If someone is referring a book to read a website to go to, you can also mark those. You just click and it gets marked. Now once you have used tags at a later date when I'm revising or when I'm studying that topic, I may want to see all books to read or if I'm an auditor, I want to see all the audit program problems across all my meetings. How do I do that? Then you go to find tags. When you go to find tags, what happens? It gives you a tag summary. It is grouped by the tag, so it found all the quality problems, all the questions, and of course you can choose the granularity of search as to where across all notebooks, this notebook, and so on and so forth. So this basically enhances the notes which you are taking. Similarly, another very useful stuff is checklist. For example, I give demos all the time. Every day I'm going to probably two customers and giving a demo. The demo files get confused. Some options which are supposed to be open are not open. So this is a part of a checklist which is my pre demo checklist. Everything is mentioned here. I say OK, this is done. This is done. This is done. This is done. And then I am sure that nothing is going to go wrong in the demo. In fact, this is the checklist I am using for this particular event because as you know, I am talking about multiple events every day, so it has to be predictable and repeatable. So checklists are very useful. Checklists can be saved as template and then instantiated. So you can go to a OneNote notebook, say this template of this checklist becomes the default page. So when you add a new page, that checklist automatically appears. For example, you have a recruitment notebook and you have a pre recruitment checklist. So every time you create a new page, the checklist appears in the title. You just put the candidate name and then you can track exactly what is happening by candidate. Now link notes is another brilliant feature. Notice what is happening here. I have just typed well written. There is a play button because there is an audio, but there is an Internet Explorer icon. When I click on that icon, it will actually go to the web page which was open when I took these notes. Here is another example. I have said how to create that cube. This is a question I had. The question was about a PowerPoint presentation I was looking at. And there is a PowerPoint icon and when I hover on the icon, it's actually showing me a thumbnail to that particular PowerPoint presentation. That presentation is not open now. When I click on this icon, I will have to do nothing. One note will find that PPT. Not only open it, it will go to that slide. This is miraculous. If you have never tried this, try it out. How does this work? In OneNote view tab, you go to dock to desktop, then OneNote goes on one side and the rest of desktops you can open either Word or PowerPoint and browser pages, but unfortunately the limitation is the browser has to be Internet Explorer. 
other browsers it doesn't work with as of now. So what do you do? You open a Word document, a PPT or a browser page and then just take notes. It will automatically link them. It's amazingly powerful if you are doing some kind of research. And finally, there is a nice little calculator. I can just type stuff and uh, press equal to and space bar. It just calculates. If you have never tried it, just try it out immediately after this session. It's very handy. Finally, meetings can happen as a part of a project, so you can add a shared notebook to Teams. Go to Teams, go to a channel, click on the plus sign, insert a OneNote notebook. You don't have to create a new notebook. When you create a team, a notebook gets automatically created. You just have to add it. It will add a section and then everyone can take notes in the same notebook. No need to send CCs and attachments. So that's all we had time for today. Maybe we will go deeper into another subject or more detailed version of OneNote if you desire so. For the time being, let's take questions. As you know, you can type questions in that top right corner and mention the slide number. In the meantime, I have written a lot of blog articles on OneNote and all those articles are available here, bit.ly, OneNote LB. Or you can just go to my blog, efficiency365.com and search for OneNote. I think I have written more than 100 articles on OneNote. So now let's take questions. All right, yes. Uh, can you read Prashant out? Prashant has a question. Yeah. So one 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 node that gets installed as an app on Windows 10 does not have most of these features. Is the one node required to be installed separately? I have installed 2016 version to use the features. I do have Office 365 subscription but also need to have 2016 version just for OneNote. Yes, Prashant, that's a very good question. So as I said, OneNote comes in two flavors, even on the desktop. So let me try to show you that. If I go to OneNote, notice I can see two tabs here, two items. So this is the Windows 10 app, which as he has rightly said, does not have all the features. Whatever features I am showing you is in OneNote 2016. Now original Microsoft plan was to kill the desktop version of OneNote and only keep the Windows 10 app version. So they never created OneNote new version or 2019 or Pro Plus or whatever. In fact, if you go to Office Pro Plus or Office 365 subscription installation, OneNote didn't even get installed and then all the users did not like that. So now in the base install of Office 365 subscription, OneNote does get installed, the desktop version, but it is still 2016. So that is how it is. Even now it has more versions than the desktop app. The desktop, so the Windows 10 app and iPad app are having feature parity and to some extent even the browser app. But as of today, yes maximum features in desktop, but going further, they are going to add features only in the app versions, not in the desktop versions. OK, next. Prashant also has another question saying about recording. When I record a Teams meeting on OneNote, only my voice gets recorded. Meeting people voices does not get recorded. That's why I have to record on Teams, but it's not the same as OneNote recording. Yes, good question again, Prashant. So as I said earlier, in if you are doing a meeting in Teams, irrespective of whether you are using OneNote or not, what will happen? It will give you a meeting recording in Teams itself, which is a stream recording and stream benefit is it creates a transcript automatically. It's like automatic minutes of meeting. So the benefit of using Teams based meeting recording is you are getting an automatic transcript. The disadvantage is your notes have nothing to do with that transcript. So if you use one note, then you have, you will get the audio recording plus linking of your notes, which is also good. Now the problem is one note picks up whatever your microphone picks up. So if you are hearing people's voices on your speaker, 
then one node should pick it up. But the problem is due to echo cancellation, it may not be picking up your other people's voices. So ideally, system sound should be a part of uh, the recording, but in default windows, you can't force that to happen. So uh, Prashant, send me a mail. I will type my email ID here. Or yes, you can type it there. I will research on this and get back to you. Next question is asked, uh, does it work on Edge, the new latest Edge as well? Uh, the browser edition of notes. OneNote, of course, works on Edge, but the link notes part does not work on Edge. It works on Internet Explorer only, which is sad. Probably they are working on it. You can go to user voice and check. But having said that, many corporates have not checked out Internet Explorer even today. So if you have that, basically that IE is being kept for backward compatibility with some line of business applications. So it's more of a majburi that you are using it, but this is a good use of that very arcane software till it comes on edge. And if you happen to have IE just for this purpose, use IE. Don't use IE as a default browser. It has many other issues, but this feature is so brilliant. It may make sense to make an exception for IE. Next question is, I understand about searching scanned copy. What about PDF documents? Is it similar to scanned copies? So PDF documents can be created from a document itself, in which case the content is searchable within PDF itself if it is text. But if it's a scanned document, typically we scan two PDFs. So every page is basically an image. So if that is the case, what I showed will work. Going one step further, if you have any document, even if you have a Word document, which is a scanned document, which means everything is a picture, even in Word you can say file, print, choose OneNote as a printer, and same thing will work. So any software which has image in it and has a print option, you can use this. Okay, next. There are no more questions as of now. All right. OK, so if you have no questions, then let me just close this. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, we'll see. So as you know, this is a series. So tomorrow we continue with OneDrive. And uh, on Monday we will do Outlook and so on. All the live stream schedules are available on this link. This video will be available on YouTube very soon in another two hours on YouTube. This is the PL playlist. Corona DD is the default prefix we are using. This is my YouTube channel. You will find a lot of interesting stuff there. This is going to be a short video with Q&A, but there are many other longer, deeper videos as well across different topics. So please have a look and share it with your friends and colleagues. So that's it. Thank you and be safe. If there are any more questions, we'll take them. Otherwise, I think we should call it a night. Anindo? I don't I don't think there are any more questions, so I think we can call it tonight. All right, so thanks Jios, Shesham and Anindo for helping me with this initiative. I hope to see all of you soon with much larger numbers with all your friends, colleagues and loved ones tomorrow for one drive. Thank you and good night.